E-fuels are offering a new life for combustion engines. Porsche, Stellantis, Ferrari, BMW, and other automakers are taking a hard look at carbon neutral e-fuel to extend the life of internal combustion and diesel engines for sports cars, SUVs, and pickups. We have heard about synthetic fuels or e-fuels, and supporters are saying that synthetic fuels are the only way to decarbonize internal combustion engines, and critics say that it's a costly distraction from electrification. Let's take a closer look. The European Commission's decision in late March to allow an exemption for cars running on e-fuels or synthetic fuels will qualify for sale after 2035. This leads to a positive option for drivers. All new vehicles must be zero emissions by 2035 in Europe, and e-fuels has gotten the internal combustion engine in new life in Europe. Critics say that e-fuels are an expensive distraction from the transition to electrification, which they say offers a much greater return on investment if the goal is to reduce greenhouse gases. Let's forget the politics. Let's take a closer look. But first, I want to remind you to subscribe and click that little bell for notifications so you don't miss anything. We give you more than car reviews and first looks of new vehicles. We give you car smarts because knowledge is power. First, what are e-fuels or synthetic fuels? E-fuel combines carbon dioxide taken from the ambient air or captured in a supply comparable to that of a refinery and hydrogen obtained from the water by electrolysis. The big story with synthetic fuel is the lure of e-fuels and that means no modifications to your engine, no changes to your gasoline fuel injectors, no different elements or emission systems. It allows the inside of the combustion engine of an automobile to run almost as cleanly as an electric vehicle. That would be what we're all looking for so you don't have to sell your vehicle. Automakers are saying that e-fuels work in all of their engines and the issue is that refiners have to determine a way to manufacture it in a value that's equivalent to gasoline. E-fuels price currently is around $11 per gallon. Now the latest research by the Worldwide Council on Clear Transportation says Shell, Exxon, Aramco and several other small refineries are creating e-fuels and testing them daily and they've been doing it for years. In Europe, automobiles like Porsche and Ferrari are testing e-fuels to protect the character and the efficiency of their sports cars and the unique history of those automobiles. Refiners still have some work to do in perfecting high volume strategies to provide e-fuel in sufficient amounts to replace it or blend it with current gasoline, which is an option. Reducing the price is critical for consumers. Today, Porsche has invested $75 million in the production of e-fuels in China, Germany, and other countries, and they're currently testing it here in the US. Automakers say that e-fuel is a direct drop-in alternative for gasoline. It doesn't require automakers to change engines, gasoline system elements, or emissions methods. On the negative side, critics highlight that manufacturing e-fuels is very expensive and energy intensive. Using e-fuels in an internal combustion engine car can require about five times more renewable electricity than running a battery electric vehicle, according to a 2021 paper in the Nature Climate Change Journal. Some policymakers also argue that e-fuels should be reserved for hard to decarbonize sectors such as shipping and aviation, which unlike passenger cars, cannot easily run on electric batteries. Most major car makers are betting on battery electric vehicles, a technology that is already widely available as the main route to cutting CO2 emissions from passenger cars. But suppliers and oil refiners defend e-fuels, as well as a number of car makers who don't want their vehicles weighed down by heavy batteries, and of course, shortening distances when you have to tow something. So e-fuels are certainly an option. E-fuels are not yet produced at scale. The world's first commercial plant opened in Chile in 2021. It's backed by Porsche and aimed to produce 550 million liters per year. Other planned plants include Norway's Norsk e-fuel, due to begin producing in 2024 with a focus on aviation fluid. What is the final result? Well, we shall see what consumers want to buy and their choices will improve over time. Personally, I'm waiting for e-fuel for my vehicles. How about you? If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. If you have any questions or comments, because I'm sure you will, I'll be happy to answer. You can support me by buying me a cup of coffee. The link for that is in the description, plus all the links for our website, social media, the book, and the podcast. I'm Lauren Fix. Thank you so much for watching.